Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype trace and GD match results of an East African pastoralist woman from Kenya. This is the Neolithic period in Kenya. In Europe, this is the Iron Age, but in Europe, Neolithic came a little bit earlier. Agriculture and all that stuff came to Kenya only with, uh, with people like this woman. With Maina Shakot, she is predicted to have dark brown color eyes, Middle Eastern snub-shaped nose and black hair. Uh, you can actually get predicted with Middle Eastern and snub shaped nose at the same time. Those are not oxymorons here because it's two separate calculations that determine uh, the ethnicity of your nose shape and the shape of your nose shape, right? So you can get Middle Eastern and snub, you can get Sub Saharan African and Greek, you can get East Asian and Greek, that's possible. Although East Asian and Greek is kind of difficult because uh, some of the variants that can treat. I'm not gonna go into detail about this. With Snipper Free, she is predicted to have brown color eyes, black hair, and intermediate, actually intermediate and not black skin, which is kind of interesting. Uh, she doesn't have any of the derived variants in SLC 24A5 or SLC 45A2 that contribute to Eurasian light skin. Uh, does not have any derived variants in MC1R or IRF4, so no ginger related variants. But she does actually have some. Uh, derived variants in SLC 24A4, which is kind of interesting. Those variants contribute to lighter color eyes. She has got one derived no-go learner variant in the profernatine pro variation of DRD2, which is kind of interesting because you wouldn't expect a sub-Saharan African to get uh, the T allele here. It's a very European allele to have. I think she got it from the Natufians. Uh, in talk 1, she's got A2A2 genotype, which is pretty typical for any human. Most humans have A2, A2. Now, Neanderthals, monkeys, various apes, they have A1, A1 here. And um, I think sub South African hunter-gatherers also often have A1 here. Uh, with um, with this variation of DRD2, she's, she's got uh, heterozygous genotype. Pretty typical for Sub-Saharan Africans and for, or for East Asians. Europeans tend to have CC here. And um, in Comte's Valmet variation, she's got... Uh, val Val, which means warrior, which means quicker dopamine reuptake, less dopamine in the system. Very typical genotype for a non-European, basically. Based on her genotype in Act 1, which is, by the way, I imputed this uh, variation based on a, another variation that was close by. Based on her genotype in this variation of Act 1, uh, she had greater odds of cannabis-induced psychosis. Um, well... I don't think in Kenya they were smoking weed at the time. I don't think uh, marijuana was a big component of their culture. Not like in the step where everybody was smoking weed. Uh, in OXTR, she does not have the sociopath gene. This is the main variation in OXTR that has to do with sociopathy. And she's optimistic and empathetic here. But this is another variation of OXTR. And here she does have the sociopath gene. However, uh, this variation is a little bit less, in, uh, less important when it comes to uh, the phenotype. Less studied, less important. Now for EDAR does not have derived EZAR, does not have East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped incisors, epicanthic folds, all that stuff. This is one of the myopia variants that I found in her file, and she does not have the T allele which protects against myopia, so uh, it's possible that she might have had myopia. Now, she does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which means, not. it doesn't mean that she's lactose intolerant, it just means she's not a European. And um, also she has this variation which I found from uh, the methylation panel, she has apparently increased risk of low bone mineral density. And another variation that I found from the uh, methylation panel from Genetic Genie is that she's got reduced MAOA activity. Now this is pretty interesting because this is kind of like the warrior gene, but different. It's a different, uh, it's a different warrior gene. And here she's actually a warrior, like typical European stuff. You know, um, what, what is it? It's lower enzyme activity, less dopamine reuptake, more dopamine building up in her system. Pretty interesting stuff. Now here's another very interesting genotype that I found from her methylation panel on Genetic Genie here. She has a reduced risk of cleft lip and palate, very interesting, very good thing to have. Uh, and with Eurogenes K13, she's mostly scoring Northeast African, but she's also scoring some Red Sea, and she's also scoring some East Mediterranean. She's scoring some Mediterranean components, which in her case came from, uh, of course, the Natufians. She's also scoring West Mediterranean, which I think also came from the Natufians. Um, she is closest to Ethiopians from Oromo here, followed by Somali, so closest to East Africans. And she's from Kenya. Kenyans are pretty different. Kenyans are a lot more uh, Sub-Saharan African relative to like Ethiopians or Somalis. But she's not very similar to Kenyans. As you can see, she's most similar to Somalis and Ethiopians. Interesting thing is that she's from Kenya, which means Kenyans, modern Kenyans, probably have ancestry from people like her. And um, 
Actually, uh, Barack Obama's father is Kenyan, right? And Barack Obama, I think he looks very Mediterranean. Like, I see some resemblance between between him and even people like Osama bin Laden. It, I'm not the first person to say it. Like, there is really strong resemblance between Barack Obama and Osama bin Laden and a bunch of other Mediterranean people. I think Barack Obama's phenotype is kind of similar to what Natufians might have looked like, at least in the way I uh, perceive them. So, um, with this oracle, <laughs> she's getting modeled as a mixture of Ethiopian plus Bantu or Ethiopian plus... Uh, Luhia, so a mixture of uh, Ethiopian plus something more Sub-Saharan African and uh, with Ethiohelix K10 she's actually scoring 11% French which is interesting she is scoring 19% North African I guess if you if you add up the French and the North African that together would probably be the Natufian component that she's got um, with the Oracle she's getting modeled as a mixture of Ethiopian plus Sahara or Mozabite I'm not sure if uh, it's a legitimate result or if it's just a bad Oracle this is what she scores with MZLP K23B. She's scoring 11% archaic African. This is actually sort of the category that separates um, Neanderthals from like monkeys because monkeys only score archaic human. Monkeys are 100% archaic human, whereas Neanderthals are archaic human plus archaic African. So archaic African is kind of this modern modern drift that separates Neanderthals from monkeys. It's interesting that she's scoring a lot of this category. Um, a lot of archaic African category. Now, with um, Ancient Eurasia K6, she's actually scoring 50% Sub-Saharan African. Everything else, everything that isn't Sub-Saharan is from Natufians. Everything else. Even though the calculator says only 28% Natufian, everything else is from Natufian. Western hunter-gatherer, uh, ancestral North Eurasian, ancestral South Eurasian, East Asian, that's all from Natufian ancestry because Natufians don't actually score 100% Natufian here. It's not a very good... Uh, it, the oracle here is based on uh, modern population uh, allele frequencies, not on any ancient samples. So the Natufian here... Everything that's not Sub-Saharan African is from Natufian. So with Gidrosia K3, pretty much 54% Sub-Saharan African and the rest, uh, the rest 45%, it's all from Natufian. She's very Natufian in her ancestry. Thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download her genome in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.